I have just come back from visiting my sister and her family. I have a two-year-old niece we will call Tracy, and a one-year-old niece we will call Casey. The backstory on this is that I posted a while back and described how when my first niece was born, I lived in the house with them, and some very strange paranormal happenings took place there. Now the room the girls are in, my niece's, is my old bedroom. My sister has a baby monitor with a camera that is set to see Tracy's bed. Casey is out of frame because she still sleeps in a crib and cannot get out of it in the middle of the night. My sister keeps the camera on Tracy as a means of making sure she is still in bed throughout the night. Last night we put the girls to bed and went to the living room to chill. We were watching the monitor and laughing at how Tracy was playing in her bed and flopping around but did not get out of it, probably too many times of being scolded for getting up and playing. As we were watching we could hear Casey distinctly singing out of frame. So cute. We were laughing about how they lay in bed at night and spoke gibberish baby talk to each other. My sister then decided that it had been long enough that they'd been up and goes into the bedroom. As she walked down the hall I could still hear Casey singing. As my sister opened the door it suddenly went silent. When she walked back her face was white and she says, Casey is asleep. I said, so who was singing? And who was Tracy talking to? My sister shrugged and told me she didn't know. We continued to watch the monitor and see Tracy do several very strange things. First, she sat up in her bed and started to rock back and forth. She has never done that. And second, she waved at the camera. I'm not really sure how she knows where it is since it was only just put up and it is very small and out of the way. I don't want to think something is in there with my nieces, but honestly, I don't know. It was the early 80s and my brother, who was 10, and me, 8, were being babysat by a local woman called Sue Jean. Sue Jean was in her early 70s. She had a very nice two-storey house with four bedrooms and a beautiful backyard with swing sets and playground equipment. She was the sweetest, nicest little rounded woman you could ever meet. She ran an after-school daycare because her husband lost his job to having cancer. It was late stages and she was just a poor little deer trying to make ends meet. All of the local mums fell for it. The truth was, we'd get off the school bus and Miss Sue, as we had to call her, would force us to line up outside her immaculate home and then she'd hand us apples and one glass of water. The wonderful playground in her fenced backyard was for her grandchildren. We weren't even allowed to lean on the fence. Instead, all twelve of us, aged six to ten, had to sit in the grass in the front yard of the abandoned, falling-down house across the street from Miss Sue's house. Clutching our apples and water while she told us the most horrific fake Bible stories. Redheads were evil. They'll drag your soul straight to hell. Satan is red and hair is only red if the devil is born inside that child. People sacrifice redheads. Twins evil, period. Two bodies can't share one soul, you sweet babies. Then until our parents showed up, she would allow us to run around the front yard of the abandoned house, as long as we were quiet. We were forbidden to go into the backyard because Miss Sue swore there were two hidden wells that would swallow you whole. Needless to say, my mother pulled my brother and I out of her crazy daycare after only a week, and Miss Sue's husband died maybe a month later. Her daughter had put her in a home eventually. I always thought she was just a nutsy old lady, but then my mother told me that the abandoned house she made us sit in, the one with the wells, was abandoned in the fifties because the family who lived there found their twin daughters drowned in the well. They had red hair. Miss Sue had lived across the street for over forty years.
Growing up, I lived down south on a farm. It isn't the typical farm that many think of. We didn't raise cows and chickens, but my mum was a horse trainer and my dad a veterinarian. So we of course had horses and various other animals, both wild and domestic. The house we lived in was made up of spare parts from various other houses. Right off the bat when I found this out, my first thoughts went towards the chances of negativity following those pieces. Even at a young age, I was fascinated with the paranormal and things of that nature. But I'm not an irrational person. I wasn't then, and I'm not now. I understand things can be explained, and there's a reason behind every bump and whisper. One day I came home to get dressed for some event that my family was attending later that day. I was the only person home, and I knew this because I left my father's clinic in town where he was working, and I knew my mother was running errands. My brother was out of town on a trip with school, so I was definitely home alone. Whilst getting ready, I decided to have a quick shave in the downstairs bathroom. I'll give you a quick layout of the house. As you walk into the house, you enter the laundry room. From there, you have to open another door. Once through that, you can either go up the stairs to the second floor where my bedroom was, or walk past the stairs into the kitchen or the bathroom which I was in at the time. While I'm in the bathroom shaving, I hear the front door open. I think nothing of it because my mom had probably gotten home earlier than usual. I then hear footsteps and the second door opens. Nothing unusual about this either. Then I hear someone walk upstairs. This makes me stop and think. Did my brother get home early? With shaving cream still on my face, I poke my head out and both doors are open, but I don't see any cars outside. Now I start to worry, because I can hear footsteps walking around upstairs. I call out, Bro, you're home? Mum, you upstairs? Where's your car? Nothing but silence except for the sound of footsteps. Okay, now I'm spooked, but decide to wash my face and go see what's causing the noises. I go upstairs to investigate and find nothing. Even though I'm freaked out, I decided to go back down and finish shaving because maybe I was hearing things. I love scary things, so oddly the experience was more of an exciting thrill than something making me run out of the house screaming. But whatever this thing was, it wasn't done. Late that night after my parents and I get back home, I decide to head straight to bed. I walk upstairs and get ready for bed. While I'm laying in bed, I got this uneasy feeling that I wasn't alone in my room. Now my room is huge, so large that my brother and I shared it. But remember, he was out of town on a trip, so I was totally alone in there. Being alone wasn't the feeling I was getting. I decided to sit up and look around, but it got worse and I started to get a really bad feeling. Since I attended Catholic school, I decided I would recite the Lord's Prayer because for some reason that calmed me down. I'm not the religious type, but it helps. As I'm finishing the prayer and say the words, but deliver us from evil, I hear this huge slam on the roof of the house. It wasn't as if something fell on it, but like something heavy took a massive step on it. This was a bit too much for me. I jump out of my bed and turn the lights on. The worst part, my parents never came up to see if everything was fine. It was as if I was the only one who heard or felt this slam on the roof. How is that possible? It wasn't something to be ignored. How could it have been? After this, so many more experiences happened. Soon I will recount them, from shadowy figures to growling and even scratching. As much as I wish this wasn't, it is a true story, and little did I know, it was only the beginning. When I was about 12 or 13 years old, my mum and I were visiting my grandparents for Christmas. They lived in this huge, two-storey house with six bedrooms. It was in Utah, out in the middle of nowhere. As you walked in through the front door, there was a big, open living room. 
On the far left side of that room were gigantic windows that extended all the way from the ceiling to the floor. Beyond that was the kitchen. There were no walls separating the living room from the kitchen. It was very open and spacious. On the other side of the living room to the right was the guest bedroom where I slept. Continuing on to the right there was a bathroom which connected the guest room to my great grandmother's bedroom. After that there was a small hallway that led to the master bedroom. So basically once you walked in there's the living room with a bunch of rooms on the right and then beyond that was the kitchen. Then behind the kitchen were the stairs leading down to two bedrooms and the garage. My mum slept in one of these rooms and I refused to go down there because it was always freezing. It's not really important but I wanted to give you an outline of the house. On Christmas morning, sometime around 12 to 4 a.m., I don't know the exact time, but everyone was asleep. I suddenly woke up. I don't remember why, but I had woken up. After a few seconds of lying there, I heard something in the living room. Naturally, I get the grand idea to investigate. I get out of bed and quietly open the door. As I'm standing in the doorway, nonchalantly looking around, I see and hear nothing. Just as I'm about to close the door and get back into bed, I begin to notice how the moon is shining on the Christmas tree. It had this weird sort of eerie glimmer. It was mesmerizing and I can't really describe it. It was just odd and gave off a weird feeling. For some reason I started to walk towards it. And just then, stopping me dead in my tracks, the tree began to shake. Not a lot but just enough to give that faint nails on a chalkboard scratching of ornaments rubbing against the plastic tree sound. Obviously extremely freaked out, I very slowly turned around to go back in my room. As I began walking backwards, not taking my eyes off the tree, the wreath to my left on the front door started to shake. It was anything but subtle this time. Something was obviously trying to fuck with me. I immediately turned around and sprinted into my bedroom, closing the door and hiding beneath my sheets. Sitting there for a few seconds, I begin to hear something like metal being pressed against the railings at the end of my pull-out bed. I don't know why, but I immediately got this vivid picture of a grisly, demented lumberjack with an axe standing at the foot of my bed, just waiting for me to pull the bedsheets from over my head. I never did. Everything after that is a blur. I probably sat there for what felt like an eternity, but in reality it was a half an hour or so before I fell back to sleep. To this day I can't explain what happened. No one in my family heard anything. Never had any weird experiences in that house. Nothing. Oddly enough, Christmas was pretty great that morning. It wasn't until a few years later that I began to have flashbacks and dreams of that dewy morning. Every time I even think about this, I get the chills and it becomes hard to breathe. I seriously thought I was going to die that night. When I was growing up, my family did a lot of moving around. We lived in shelters for a long time until my mum finally settled down with my now stepdad and we moved into the house I was pretty much raised in. It was an odd layout. On the first floor there was one bedroom that was my parents' room. It had three doors, one leading to the only bathroom, another to the foyer and the last to the dining room. And of course there was a kitchen and a living room. The top floor had three rooms. Two rather large ones, and one of which had a kitchen we'd ripped out, with a small room that could be described as a large closet. My room was on the second floor, and it was the largest in the whole house. It had two closets and two large windows, both on one wall. It was a Saturday night, I believe. I was sitting on the couch in the living room watching adults swim when I saw a shape move out of the corner of my eye. I don't know why, but I got a strange feeling as if I shouldn't look over there, so I kept my gaze locked onto the TV. The shape was definitely human and definitely solid, but it was also dark, almost unnaturally so, with the light from the TV. It stopped halfway to the stairs and turned to look in my direction. 
I figured it was probably just my stepdad. He had this strange habit of staring into a room at me or my sister. So, not wanting to know if I'd been caught staying up so late, I ignored him, hoping he would just go back to sleep. After a moment, he turned and walked up the stairs. I shrugged, figuring he was checking on my half-brothers. He came back downstairs and stopped again, standing in the same spot as before and turning to stare at me. Okay, that was a little different. Usually, my creepy stepdad did that like once a week, not twice in the same night. I ignore him and keep watching cartoons. Then, the shape turns and walks back upstairs, and that's when I noticed something off. His steps were... silent. Our house was old and I had the volume down to nothing, so I should have at least heard those awful stairs creaking as he walked. But I didn't. I sat there, staring wide-eyed at the screen until I became too curious. I looked over and I couldn't see anything. Not at first. Then I saw movement at the top of the stairs, feet moving at the same slow pace as before, and I turned right back to the TV. The shape descended the stairs and stopped once again at the same exact spot, staring at me again. Then it turned around and walked up the stairs again. Terrified, I shot into my parents' bedroom after it was out of sight, and that's when I saw both my mum and my stepdad sound asleep in their bed. When I was in third grade, I moved to a new school and didn't make very many friends for a while. I remember during breakfast I would sit by this kid who would never eat. He was older than me, probably in eighth grade, and he would do really good drawings. I would just sit and watch him draw. He did not seem to mind. He seemed to enjoy someone appreciating his art. We didn't talk much, but when we did, it was about his drawings. All of his drawings were mangled people, and when I asked about them, he'd say most of them were factory explosion victims or some other horrid thing like that. The only other time I saw him was during recess, when no one would ever talk to him, and he would sit on a bench and speak a different language to himself. So in his defence, he may have been very religious, and was praying at recess, but it was very sketchy. I didn't know what language it was. It sounded more like gibberish than an actual language. At this school we had different classes like music, dance and art, and then our normal class where we'd learn regular school subjects, and we would switch from class to class. So it was time to get to our next class when we were stopped by our teacher. She told us that we weren't allowed to go into the hallway, so we just stayed and waited until we went to our next class as normal. The next day the kid wasn't there, and he never showed up again. To this day I don't know what happened or if the kid had anything to do with it. Hey everyone, Miss Fearsome here. Um, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I want to say a big thank you to everybody for subscribing and following me. Um, also a massive thank you to the people for their stories. Um, fantastic stories. And I hope to be getting a lot more this year. I hope to be getting um, a video uploaded every week, preferably. Um, but we'll see how the time goes. Um, check me out on Facebook, Atmosphearsome1983. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.